Hi and welcome to the Chrome Dev Tutorial Part 2. Okay, today we'll be uh, learning to use the console. Okay, uh, utilizing the console gives you the ability to log diagnostic information uh, to help debug your applications, uh, enter commands that interact with the document and the Chrome Dev tools. Okay, you may also evaluate normal JavaScript expressions. So this tutorial will provide an overview and the common usage of the console. Okay, we will be also exploring the console API and the command line API. Okay, so to open the console, uh, either you can click on this menu option and then go to more tools and then developer tools or JavaScript console. Okay, so this is one way. <coughs> The second way is by using the shortcut key Control Shift and J. So this will also open the console. Okay. So <clears throat> this is the interface that is provided by the Chrome Dev Tools, and this is the place where we will be interacting or typing our commands. Right. So let's look at these different options that we have the first option is to clear the console say suppose if i have a lot of things printed in the console i can use this command to clear the console the second option is the filter options we will be looking at this filter options okay the second or third option is your frames so if you are using iframes in your applications and you want to restrict or you want to just execute commands on that particular iframe you can do so okay so the console can operate within different frames of the page Okay, the primary page is the top frame of the document. An iframe element, for example, would create its own frame context. Okay, you may specify the frame by using the drop down beside the filter button. Okay. So the console API uh, is a collection of methods provided by the global console object defined by the dev tools. Okay, one of the main purpose is to log information to the console while the application is running. Okay. <coughs> so the first statement that we will look at is the console.log. So basically what it does is this method takes one or more expressions as parameters and write the current value to the console. Okay, so I have done a simple event handler here uh, that will actually listen to the click event on the page and execute this method. So let's execute the simple method. So when I click on this, I can see this header was clicked. So this was the console.log information that was printed, right? So I can also have multiple parameters that will be concatenated into a space delimited line. So to do so, what I can do is I can either use this plus symbol to concatenate other elements or text, or I can use this comma separated values okay so this is a very neat way to do it okay so the chrome will automatically add a space but in this case we have to add a space in this case chrome will automatically add a space so let's look at the demo here so if i just save this okay so in this demo what we are doing is we are just reading uh oh sorry we are creating an element okay and then we are attaching some nodes and then we are just printing the count of it okay and also in this case we are printing the count as well as printing the time so if i come here and i click on this so you can see the total count is 2 and the current time is this right <clears throat> the next we will look into is your error and warnings right so errors and warnings act as the same way as normal logging okay the key difference is the error and the warn uh, uh, methods have different styles okay so the styles is used to bring attention to the user okay so that means something is wrong the console error method displays a red icon along with the red message text whereas the console.warn method displays a yellow warning icon okay so what i've done is i've just printed some error here okay and then i have a normal log and the console warn so let's execute this So if I want to clear this off, I can click here since this was loaded automatically. So our console got cleared. Now when I click on this, now I can see the error is in a red text, right? So and the one symbol is shown here. 
Now, say for example, I have a lot of these errors and warnings and log statements and I want to filter them out. So I can just click on this filter option and then just filter out the error messages. So I can just see only the error messages. If I click on warnings, I can just see the warnings. And if I click on logs, I can just see the logs, right? The next option that we will look into is something called the grouping. Okay. Now you can group related output together with the group command. Okay. The group command takes a single string parameter to set the name of the group. The console will begin to group all subsequent output together. To end the group, you need to call the group end. Okay. So what this group basically does is it will group all the logs under one heading. Okay. So it becomes very easy for us to do the tracing of a particular request or a particular function execution. So let's look at the demo first. So what I have done here is Okay, we'll come to this group collapsed in some time. So I have created a group called server communication. Okay, and what I'm doing is I'm just logging all in the information. Okay, I can even create a nested group. That means a group within a group. So by doing so, it will have a nesting or a tree like structure. Okay, and the way to end the group is simply sp specify the group end. So this will end the last group that was created and this will this will uh, close the group that was created previously right so now when i click on this now you can see this message has been grouped so i can see whatever i have given as the heading server communication okay so this all the messages have been grouped together and this is the subgroup that was created okay since i don't have anything here so it's not showing i was sorry uh, we had this uh, filter options so if i remove this filter options so I can see all the messages now, right? Now, when you're working with groups heavily, it can be very useful to not to see everything as it happens. Okay. For this times you can use automatically collapse groups by calling the group collapse instead of the group. So what happened out here was everything was non collapsed, right? Everything was open here. So if I want to collapse it, so what I can do is instead of using the group, I can use this group collapse function. Okay. Now what will happen here is, so when I click on this, automatically everything is collapsed. And if I want to see it, I can just click here, right? Next we will look into viewing structured data. Okay. So the console API provides a table method. Uh, which provides an easy way to view similar data objects. Okay, this will take the properties of an object and create a header. Row data comes from each indexes property values. Okay, so I have a JSON object here uh, with some properties. Okay, I, I have also a simple JSON object an array which has A B C. What I can do is I can use this function console dot table. So this is the products. And in the products, I want to print all the properties. Okay. So sometimes if you have a large object, it is difficult to visualize the data, right? So this table is a very nice option. So let me just copy this and uh, put it here. Now when I click on this, so you can see a very nice table like structure has been created. So this is for the first object. Okay, this is the product object and the second one was for the simple object where we had the properties as a b c a b and c right now next we will look at into is the formatting of the dom elements right so when you log a dom element to the console it displays in an xml format okay this is the same as viewing as a L, as an elements panel now to display the JS representation or the JavaScript representation, you may either use the DIR method. Okay. Now let's execute this method. So what's going to happen here is we'll have a look. So <clears throat> I just copy this. So what I've done here is uh, we have just logged the document dot body first element and using the DIR method, we have exactly taken the same thing. So let's look at the difference and see what happens here okay now see the log method will actually give you a tree like structure this is 
similar to this elements panel that we have seen okay whereas the log.dir will give you more of an object representation so if i see the nodes here so i can see this header i can see this jumbotron row marketing and footer so it is up to you what kind of view suits okay so next we will look into the timing interface or timing method so this is used to measure how long something takes or a function call takes or executing a statement takes okay a timer starts by calling the time method okay you must pass a string to the method to identify the time marker when you want to end the measurement call you simply call the time end okay and pass it the same string that you use for the initializing the console logs the label and the time elapsed when the end time method fires okay so what we have done is so we have started the timer and we are just creating some array objects and we are just ending the timer so this will tell us how much time it took for this particular execution so this is a very handy way uh, in finding out the performance of your methods or statements okay so now when i click on this so we can see the array initialization took 290 milliseconds okay so next option is setting breakpoints in javascript okay so in the previous tutorial we had seen uh, using breakpoints right so out here i can specify the breakpoints and when this particular code is executed the debugger will stop here right so another way to do is by using the command or the statement called the debugger okay so let me put a debugger here and uh, let me execute this method and let me remove all the breakpoints so I don't have any breakpoints here. Now when I click on this I can see this debugger has actually paused the javascript execution okay and from now from here I can do my normal javascript debugging right. Right, the next is the command line API reference. Okay, so the command line API is a collection of functions for performing common tasks within the Chrome DevTools. Okay, so this API complements the console API. The command line API is only available from within the console itself. Right, so this is the console. So we will look at some uh, statements that this particular console provides. Okay, now say for example, I'm just adding two numbers. Okay, so this returns me four. So they have built-in variables, so that will actually store the most recent evaluated expression. So, now for example, if I have so this returns the body. Now, if I type dollar underscore, so this will give me the last evaluated statement, right? Now DevTools remembers the last five DOM elements or JavaScript objects and it makes the objects available as $0 to $4. So if I want to see the, the last element, I can type $0 and previous to this, I can, so we didn't have anything here, so it's showing as undefined. So I can also type date dot now, so this will show me the current date, okay. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial so if you liked it please do subscribe and like my channel thank you